Greetings everyone and welcome to part 2 of the Star Ocean Retrospective, and this time I'll be looking at what many people consider to be the pinnacle of the Star Ocean series, Star Ocean the second story for the PlayStation, as well as its PSP port, The Second Evolution. Oddly enough, the second story is the first Star Ocean game to be released outside of Japan. The game originally came out in North America in 1999 for the PlayStation, and its PSP counterpart came out 10 years later in 2009. Just like the original Star Ocean, the second story was developed by Tri-Ace and published by by Enix, and like First Departure, the PSP port, The Second Evolution, was handled by TOSE and published by Square Enix. However, the differences between The Second Story and The Second Evolution are not anywhere near as drastic as the changes made between the original Star Ocean and First Departure. I'll go over these differences a little later though. So, for the sake of avoiding mindless repetition and to simplify things, I'll be referring to both the PlayStation and PSP versions collectively as Star Ocean 2. With all that said, let's get right to it. Unlike almost every big Japanese RPG series, Star Ocean 2 is actually a direct sequel to the original and takes place 20 some odd years after the events of the previous game. But luckily, you don't need to have played the original or First Departure to understand or enjoy Star Ocean 2. Each entry in the series has a story that can stand alone by itself. However, if you have played First Departure, you will find that there are various nods and references to the original that you will most likely appreciate. I know I did. The most blatant of these references is the fact that our hero this time around, Claude Kenny is the son of one of the previous game's heroes, Ronix J. Kenny. While investigating an unexplored planet with his father and crew, Claude touches something he shouldn't have and ends up on the other side of the universe on a developing planet. It's here on this planet that Claude meets Reyna, the game's female lead, and gets mistaken for a legendary hero told of in Legends, and thanks to some reckless use of his blaster. Of course, Claude can't tell anyone he comes from another world because of that dang underdeveloped planet preservation pact, so the pair set off on an adventure to investigate a mysterious crashed object called the Sorcery Globe, in hopes of uncovering the mysterious events happening all over the world, and so Claude might be able to find a way to go home. And this is where I'm going to stop discussing the story, as I feel it's one of the best parts of this game and should not under any circumstances be spoiled. But I will say that this epic tale takes a while to get going. The first few hours are painfully slow and really seem to drag. You also have the choice of choosing to play the game as Claude or Reyna. Unlike other RPGs that you try the dual protagonist thing, Star Ocean 2 actually has enough differences to pay on who you pick to justify at least two playthroughs. Once I got past the slow opening hours of the game, I found the story to be very engaging, and sets itself on a much grander scale than the original. Like First Departure, the characters are also a big reason as to why this game's narrative is so good. Every character is a very distinct and likable personality, and this time around the characters are even more varied. Because of how drastically different each character is from one another, it makes it all the more difficult to choose your final party of eight. Like the original, you can't recruit all the playable characters on a single playthrough, and similar to First Departure, a new playable character was added to the PSP version. As well, most of the characters are only able to join your party after you've completed a specific side quest or certain events, so I'd recommend trying to complete as many side quests as possible, as on my first playthrough I missed most of these characters and only had six in my final party. Many of these side quests begin during private actions in many of the various towns. That's right, private actions return and have even greater effects on the ending of the game. Every character has a different amount of a value called affection for each individual party member. The higher one's affection is for another changes the endings of each character, and has minor effects in battle, like the rage state I mentioned in my Star Ocean First Departure review. The importance of all this talk of affection is that the game has well over 90 different endings for all the game's characters. Whether or not you want to replay the game dozens of times or just watch all the different endings on YouTube is up to you. Overall, I'd argue that the story and characters are much more interesting and better presented in Star Ocean 2 than both the original and First Departure. Aside from the beginning, the game's narrative is much better paced and engaging, while the cast of characters are unique and are very fun to watch interact with one another. Before I move on to discussing the gameplay, I want to briefly go over the differences between the two versions of the game. Now, our first departure is a complete remake of the first Star Ocean. The changes between the second story and the second evolution are purely aesthetical, but there are a few gameplay changes. Graphically, the PSP version is better. It has improved 3D overworld and sprite work, but most of the pre-rendered backgrounds look nearly the same between versions. The main difference gameplay-wise is that the second story offers a choice of three different levels of control over the battle system. 
I should also mention the second evolution lacks that option and is easier than the second story. The main reason for this difference in difficulty is due to the fact that when playing as Claude in the second evolution, you start the game with his three hit sword combo, which is something you need to unlock later in the second story. Because of this, chaining attacks in the PSB version is much easier, and Claude's individual sword strikes deal considerable damage, so throughout most of the first eight or so hours, you'll find the game to be on the easy side. The most substantial change between versions is the new translation that the PSP version received. While the second story's translation is not bad, it is a product of the times and is a very literal translation. As well, the second evolution features a lot of voice acting for a majority of the cutscenes. The one downside to this is that during voiced cutscenes, you cannot press X to progress the scene. You have to wait for each character to finish speaking, which I found kinda annoying as I tend to read the dialogue faster than they can speak it. Another thing that was added for the cutscenes are the new character portraits that appear when a plot relevant or playable character talks. I only bring this up because the original version's art style is much more distinct and the new anime inspired artwork looks a little generic and it makes most of the cast look way younger like Reina who's supposed to be 16 or 17 but looks like she's 12. Those differences aside, the core gameplay is virtually untouched. The battle and skill systems are the exact same as the one in First Departure, since that game is based off of Star Ocean 2, so that means Star Ocean 2 has the same pros and cons as First Departure, which are, in case you have not seen that review, that the battle system is borderline button mashy at times, and the spells completely stop battles in order to show their animations. But Star Ocean 2 is, as a whole, a more balanced game, specifically for both battle and skill systems, which make for a better gameplay experience overall. Plus, you now have a form of transportation you unlock halfway around the game. But like First Departure, if you want to work the skill system the right way, you may be able to essentially break the game. Although, I found that much more difficult to do in Star Ocean 2, as you don't have earn anywhere near the same amount of skill points. Regardless, the skill system is still one of my favorite aspects of the game. Overall, I feel that aside from the beginning of Star Ocean 2, it is a better pace than the original and overall feels a lot more polished and balanced, making for a much more pleasant experience as a whole. But having said that, I really felt that the last few bosses were really unfair, as all of their attacks are incredibly powerful spells they spam that take out most of your health or inflict terrible status ailments that can result in a game over, like petrification or paralysis. The game uses a blend of pre-rendered backgrounds, sprite work, and 3D for the overworld. The second evolution looks undeniably better and really looks nice on the PSP, but the second story has also aged rather well, aside from some of the 3D graphics it uses. Now, this game has a really kick-ass soundtrack. I would honestly argue that Star Ocean 2 is one of Motoi Sakuraba's best compositional works. The voice acting in the original is definitely a product of the times and can be cringeworthy, but it's not bad per se. The PSP port definitely has better voice actors, but not all are as good as their original counterparts, and I thought Claude's voice acting was something of a mixed bag. The PSP version also has a lot of actors voicing multiple characters, which is kind of distracting. So, as a whole, I can confidently say that both versions of Star Ocean 2 are a superior experience to the original and First Departure. Star Ocean 2 is not without its problems, but the game is so enjoyable to play that it's very easy to overlook the game's very minor problems. I would say that Star Ocean 2 is my personal favorite entry in the series and would be somewhere in my top 20 favorite JRPGs. It's that good. Finding a copy of the second evolution is pretty easy and will typically sell for around 20 bucks. The second story on the other hand, well, that's another story. Online prices usually go around 40 to 50 bucks. I can't really say I prefer one version over the other, so I'd say go with the second evolution as it is cheaper and has a couple bonuses. Sadly, neither of these games are available on the PSN, which is a shame as they'd make excellent additions. Well, that's all I have for this part. Thanks for joining me. On the next part of the Star Ocean Retrospective, I'll be looking at the most financially successful entry in the series, and debatably the most popular one among North American fans. I hope to see you all in part 3 as I review Star Ocean till the end of time. This has been Darren the Gaming Pilgrimage, till next time.